Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brun. On this episode, I'm excited to welcome back to the show, singer, songwriter, Todd Howarth. He's going to talk all about his new three CD series, The Canvas Series. He'll also talk about his days with Fraley's Comet and so much more. There's lots to cover in this episode. I know you guys are going to really enjoy it. So let's jump in and let's get started. Hey, Todd, welcome back to the show. I want to thank you for joining me today. It's great to have you back after two years. How's everything been? Uh, well, as I said previously, I'm exhausted and just destroyed looking because I've been working on uh, Harleys and motorhomes and uh, whatnot. Uh, everything's been really good. I, I just released the uh, the uh, three CDs and... Uh, they're they're doing tremendously well. I, I'm really uh, three CDs. <laughs> they are, yes. <laughs> three. Yeah, and I haven't even properly advertised them yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, when I got back from Sturgis, I had a show to do with my old top forty band here in San Diego, which was a lot of fun. And then after that, I had to get rehearsing uh, for the uh, self rehearsals for the one rehearsal that we had with uh, Anton Fig, yep. Brad Lang from the Bullet Boys. And Keith uh, Robert War uh, from uh, up in uh, Las Vegas, and we did the uh, the cruise fest in late October, uh, just before uh, Halloween, and that went really well. And then at the at, at that exact same time, I released the uh, three solo CDs, and you know I I just been so damn busy. Yeah, you know, I I thought when I would get older which is now, you know, that it'd be so much easier, but, oh my God, it's just, you know, it's, I thought 65 years old, I'll be cruising. No, I get my ass kicked, but it's a good ass kicking. You know, that's, that's one of the things I thought of Todd, as I heard, you know, so like I said, I had you on two years ago and you mentioned at the time that you were working on these CDs. And my first oh, thought yeah. was, are you crazy? Three uh, at yeah. once? <laughs> what the hell are you thinking? Well, so you're uh, right, but go ahead. <laughs> well, is there a sense of relief? Because I know you were already working on it for a few years at that point. Is there a sense of relief on your side that finally they're out, they're done? I could kind of put that behind me. Yeah, th th there is. There really is. I mean, I, w once I got it done, I mean, I was mixing up until last minute, and then I had the artwork done, and the pictures done, and, and just like rocketing it. Uh, to get it to, to um, into press for, for production for this Kiss Cruise uh, Fest thing, yes. and yeah, I, I'm I'm ex extremely happy that that I'm uh, you know I've got it done, uh, and then I listen to it and go, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that, <laughs> and you know that's there's always that type of stuff, but this has been going on for five years now. Yes. I mean, I started. Uh, just at the the peak actually of four by fate and then into return of the comet and just at at the beginning of this whole thing i was also going to play for heart with keyboards and guitar for them uh i was actually going to audition for them but i i decided not to do that so i could pursue the uh the four by fate thing and and then, and then it's sequentially the ROTC, but I've been working on these, 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 this, uh, soul stuff for quite some time. And as you said, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do three albums, not one, <laughs> not two, three albums. Um, I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I, I, I will, <laughs> would never do that again because I did everything myself and including the, 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 the uh, engineering and, and the mixing and the, 
everything, and it's like it's so much work. And I, the only it wasn't I didn't do it all because you know I'm an egotistical maniac. I did it because you know, I could, and I had the the uh, the uh, uh, scheduling where I'll do it when I can, and I don't have to re- rely on anybody else's scheduling. And it, it and it, it was <laughs> it was a great idea initially, but it's like <laughs> oh my god. I'll well, never it's one of the things I love about the fact that, they, you know, they're solo albums. And like you said, it, everything is you from the guitars, the bass, the drums, oh. right? the mix and the production, the vocals, everything. It, it's 100 percent you. That's one of the things I love about the CDs. I appreciate that. You know, and, and there's there's and, and things some things will suffer because your ears, they start to you know, deaden out after a while. And and I realize that and I'm not, I'm not a great engineer at all. Um, I, I'm just, and I've got plenty of guys that are great at doing it, but <laughs> you know, they're on the other side of the, the country and it's just, you know, uh, you know Chopper Kovac, he's, he's a phenomenal, uh, engineer and, and I, I wish I could have him, you know, could have had him working with me, but, uh, I just did it by myself and, you know, it is what it, it will be. <laughs> so for people who are watching and listening like i said it's it's three cds i know you could buy all three or you could buy any one individually yes. but it's the coastal canvas the heavy canvas the comic canvas explain to the viewers and the listeners what's the difference between them and why three separate cds well initially i wanted to do a, a heavy kind of a heavy uh, a cd and and i have a bunch of i had a bunch of ideas that i thought would have been good uh you know for just my eclectic taste as it is and i started recording them and i had actually even more ideas for the the cd but with 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 the equipment breakdown and and two bands and touring you know some of the stuff got lost in the wayside mm-hmm. but as i was doing this i thought you know i should do uh, an easy listening cd as well to to showcase my other genres of music because you know, I, I learned first on piano, and, but and I was a singer first foremost before piano, and was singing piano, drums, bass, guitar, and you know then, but it was always about songwriting. So, at the same time, I think that I had some fans that said, you know, you should do a, some uh, you know, redo some acoustical versions of the Comet songs, and I thought that's actually a good idea. I, I might do that in the future. Well, my dumb ass thought, <laughs> oh, no, I'll do that with these other two CDs I have in mind. Because right, two wasn't enough at that point. Oh, my. And, and, and here, you know, and, and at this point in time, it's, it's not an it's not a, an industry vocation for me. It's a, it's back to a hobby. I mean, I'm close to retirement, um, depending on what happens. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I manage my family's commercial business real estate here in san diego and that keeps me busy along with a few other things that i do so i'm principally busy from early in the morning until late at night and again you know i said i'm I'm older and i'm still in pretty good shape but you know i get my ass kicked daily but Mm -hmm. anyhow getting back to the cds i thought i'm gonna do all three at the same time this will be great this will be unbelievable (laughs) yes unbelievable that i'm still standing I mean, it got. I'm it, trying to think if I know of any other artists that put out three CDs in one day. Well, you know what? I, yeah, it's funny. I, Guns and Guns and Roses did Use Your Illusion one and two, right? But that's two. Okay. Kiss did the four solo albums, but they were four solo albums. I don't know any artist that did three in one day. Now, I will. I will challenge anybody, anyone, to do all the instruments, everything, songwriting, engineering, mixing. And come up with some good songs. Now, you know the the songs there on, on all three CDs. Everything's subjective. You know, everybody has a different yes. taste, what they like. But I dare anybody to play real drums and be able to do everything else. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I will get. I will say this. You know, it's a good thing for automatic punch in and punch outs on the studio <laughs> because I'm not a real drummer. I mean, I can play. I got some pretty good chops here and there. But oh my God, you know, hats off to real drummers. You know, they just kick ass. You know, Rob Afuso, yeah, he's 
He's okay. He's a real joke. He's joker. all right. <laughs> and, you know, and so hey, he's, yeah, he's, he's done one or two good things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but and and when Anton Fig did the uh, the the, uh, the cruise fest just recently, yeah. seventy years old. Amazing. He kicked ass. I mean, I haven't played with him since the live album. So that's been uh, about 30, 40 years, I guess. Wait, was he with you guys? I'm trying to remember in Indianapolis in 2018 at the Kiss Expo there. Did he play? One yeah, of the yeah, yeah. We talked about that because okay. I, I drove him to the one rehearsal that we had. Uh, before, okay. Yeah. So, and we're talking about it, says, yeah, you know, I, it was it was a lot of fun, but I was I was nowhere near ready. And I said, yeah, how could you be? Because you're doing other stuff sure. and you're there, and you know it, it comes up, but. Yeah, that, and that was it. And that wasn't really even a, a, a band thing, you know, unfortunately. Right. And we had asked, John and I had asked, you know, Ace and Anton to for all of us to get together and do at least one rehearsal. And Ace couldn't do it. We couldn't pull it together for some mm-hmm. reason. And so, you know, it suffered to a great degree. And I was unhappy for the fans. I really was because I thought, you know, we really had something there. But it just wasn't to be. But uh, well, yeah. I'll tell you this from a fan's point of view, because I was at that event. It didn't matter if it was 100 percent tight, 100 percent rehearsed. It was just fun to be in the crowd and see the four of you guys playing again for, like you said, the first time in 30 something years. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, it was exciting. And, and it just I think uh, that for the fans, yes, you're right. It was good uh, for, you know, the, the perfectionist, which is me and John. <laughs> like son of a bitch we could have done so much better you know if we just just one freaking rehearsal come on <laughs> but then that's just the way it is you know it's um it, everything happens for a reason and i i don't get overly uh bent about it but uh getting back to anton what a powerhouse still at 70 years old so, you know, I feel like bitching at 65. Eh, eh, fucking put a dress on you. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, you mentioned before being a perfectionist, right? And a lot of musicians are. And I remember talking with Brad Gillis when he was working on a solo album. And he's like, Mike, I just always feel like I want to do one more thing. Just one more thing. I'm never satisfied. He goes, and eventually I just realized that's it. I just got to stop. Otherwise, I'm going to go on forever. So my question for you, Todd, was you're working on three CDs. Mm-hmm. new material which i'll say the canvas is yours to do whatever you want you've got the comet songs to do you know and you kind of uh you know you're up against the classic versions which were harder for you to just say enough is enough was it the comet songs where you knew that there was you know something to compare it to or the new songs um the new songs that they, they had a, a you know a, once i start recording a new song I, I I pretty much have it all in my head already. Uh, there's some frosting on the cake as far as production goes. Uh, one of the songs on the on the uh, the coastal canvas, I actually wrote in my sleep. I mean, I'm sitting here right now in my on my bed. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not like John Lennon, but as <laughs> like John Lennon. <laughs> in this very spot, I woke up in the middle of the night with a song on my head. And I'm crawling out of bed, and the wife's going, "What are you doing?" I got a song of I got to get a living room and grab the guitar blah, blah, and record. It's called uh, "There Are Angels," and that song was done in two days because I just I heard the whole format in my head. So for all the new songs, you have a preconception of what it's going to be uh, as you write it and you embellish it, frosting on the cake. For all the Fraley's common stuff. I thought that was going to be easy. Well, I'll just, you know, I'll just blast it on acoustical stuff and, and, and go out. And every time I lay something down, I go, okay, I can do that better. That was horrible. You need to give the fans more. So I, I went back and re-recorded this stuff. And then I thought, well, you know what? I can't, I don't want to do everything this, the same as it was on the recordings initially, because yep. if they want to hear the original recordings, listen to the original recordings so i did th- i thought well i'm going to change it up a little bit and that's what i wanted to do with with the four by fate uh version if it's over now and john and i talked about it and and john being the the, the senior you know producer and, and responsible mm-hmm. for a lot of my career i thought okay we'll do what john wants to do and it turned out you know fantastically but 
for this, for the Freddy's Com stuff, I kept re-recording stuff because I thought I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. But yes, Brad is right because you get to a point where you go, I keep messing with it <laughs> and it's going to get worse because I don't know what I'm hearing anymore. Right. And you have to go with energy, um, performance versus perfection and finality. So true. And I've done a lot of perfect records in a subjective uh, terminology and they're perfect records. And sometimes it's like, uh, you, <laughs> you know, you need energy and you need mistakes. It, it, and this stuff is all the, these, these CDs are done on a small studio that uh, it's, it's nowhere near, you know, multi-million dollar studio. It's just a small task 32 SD card studio. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, all I was trying to do was getting the songs to the people as quickly as possible without, you know, putting me in, in the poor house, which <laughs> evidently I'm still there, but oh, yeah. no, no. you know, one of the things I noticed looking at the CDs is on the back of each one of them, you have a note that says no voice corrections used. And I was like, you know, first off, like you said, and you acknowledge the fact you're 65 and your voice still sounds absolutely hey. phenomenal, you know? So why was it important for you to put that note on there? Because, you know, what, what were you thinking? Well, I think I think that a lot of people, man, I look horrible. I was, <laughs> that, you know, a lot of people nowadays, they use voice correction as a stylist type of uh, a signature. Uh, and while that's fine, because that's what youth will do, uh, I didn't want to think, okay, here's an old guy doing, you know, his you know, more uh, recordings and he had to use studio enhancements to, you know, make it uh, sound good. And I wanted everybody to know that, no, everything you hear, uh, mistakes and all, and there are a lot of mistakes, um, that's all me. That's all my vocal. My intonation, you know, is is pretty much because I, I mean, I had the natural ability as a kid. And then when my, my uh, first piano teacher and my stepmom, my my stepmom Janet said to my dad, said, he's got perfect pitch. He needs to do some piano lessons. And my dad says, I don't give a shit. He needs to get a job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was seven years old. Right. Yay. Uh, so um, it, I, I felt it important to to list that that you know there's this is this is all natural. And when we did the four by fate record, um, our engineer and co producer there said. You know, I've I've recorded a lot of people, but I've never heard or charted anybody with his his Pro Tools uh, that that showed the pitch being like dead center on most mm. anything you ever done. So you have the most perfect pitch I've ever heard, which is a great compliment, you know, because yeah. um, and and then, but that's when I can hear myself, and sometimes live you can't hear yourself and so you drift off into a plane that you can't hear yourself uh and that's just live but for for the listings on, on the records the cds i thought it was kind of important I, I'm probably a uh, egotistical pride to say no vocal corrections it is what fucking is you know that's that you, you reminded me when I spoke with Michael Sweet, he was apologetic that he had to tune down half a step when he turned 60 years old. And I'm saying to him, well, you know, why are you kidding me? Everybody does that or even worse. A lot of people play the tapes and, and other things now. But it seems like for some of you guys, such as yourself, it's important to, for the fans for you to know, hey, this is real. There's not vocal enhancements. There's not, you know, when you're performing live, you're not playing with tapes. It, it's the real deal. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and he's a great singer, Absolutely. Singer. and you got to do what you can do, or have to do, or should do, to provide for the fans to listen to. That's very important. I mean, when when we first started playing with, uh, or when I first started playing with the Comet, you know, the first record was was a A four forty, and then A said, you know, I I'll, I want to play you know live half step down, and I thought, well, I don't care, I can sing anything at that point. Yeah. Well, as time progressed, you know, I got used to to playing in, uh, you know, half step down and it made the songs a little more ballsier. Sure. And my voice has always been, you know, kind of mid high 
uh, to begin with. And so I kind of like the fact that you bring it down a little bit. It brings my voice down a little bit. And I get a little more balls in there. <laughs> you know, all the way up there. So uh, I got used to that. And, and I record, I think I've recorded most everything uh, in my new solo, all my solo CDs as a half step down because it added a little bit more nuts to it. Mm -hmm. um, when we redid, 4x8 redid, it's over now. That was an A440. And then when I redid it for uh, the Comet Canvas, that's A440. Mm -hmm. Because I just felt it was important to say, I can still do it. You know, I gotta, I, I gotta exercise the muscles and get up to do it and do it, but I can still do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's fun, I think, for the fans because a lot of them do realize that. Um, but as we age, yes, you do need, you do need, do need a little bit of help, and um, it's just, it's just, you know, nature. It's just the way it happens. I mean. You know, I was incredibly strong and fast and a track star and a wrestler and all that bull BS, you know, back in the day. But, you know, I was 15, 17, you know, years old in junior high, high school and high school. Um, and so you just have to realize what your abilities are as time goes and continue to make the fans happy with what you have. Well, let me say this, Todd, and I, and I don't say this just to blow smoke up your ass, but, you know, when you were doing the the uh, comic canvas. I'm like, all right, how's this going to be? Is it, you know, the, the originals are such classics and the new version of it's over now with that whole musical introduction that you have on there and the vocal track on there. To me, it is far superior and that's not a knock on the original. It's a compliment of the new. It's far superior to any version that I've heard of that song before. Thank you. You know, and I, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm waiting for feedback because the, the new CDs have only been out for a few weeks. But when I did it, I, I, I wanted people to know that it can be done differently. And this is the depth of the vocal. I'm singing better than I've ever sang uh, as far as my my cadence and my, my delivery and my, my timber. My elasticity is nowhere like what it used to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to kid anybody. You know, I mean, the screaming that I used to be able to do, I can still do it, but I got to be careful because it clips the top end for the rest of the you know, hour and a half set that I'm doing when I'm singing, you know, lead all the time. But for It's Over Now, it just, it was a different approach, a smokier approach. And I just wanted people to feel it a little bit more in the heart. Um, and I, I actually, a couple fans, uh, Sue Newman, Eddie Dice, um, I believe are the, and maybe one other person, are the only ones that got an advanced copy of that song. And they were like, holy crap, you know, yep. this, this is amazing. And and you have to have that, as far as Comet fans, you have to have that outside ability to see, you know, beyond what it was. And that also opens up what you can listen to for my Coastal Canvas, which is kind of like an, an, an easy listening genre. Uh, of which, you know, I may end up doing until my twilight years. You know, like, again, I'm 65. I probably will not be doing much more after 70 because I really want to live and do other things besides, yeah. I got this new song, I'm going to start <laughs> a band, and we're going to rule the world. No, you're not. You <laughs> suck because you're old. Go. You know? Oh, that's and hilarious. Let, <laughs> and let the young people do this shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that the young fans will – Will, will adhere to the true young rockers. Uh, they're, they're actually playing instruments instead of, you know, chicka, 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 chicka. I'm so <laughs> tired of hearing this every time I drive down the street. <laughs> That's not fucking music. Agreed. That's rhythmic rhetoric. Nobody cares except for the next mindless idiot this next bar <laughs> on the other side uh so let me ask you this todd because to me i listen to the songs and like the heavy canvas and, and the coastal canvas they sound like they're modern right they, they i don't feel like i'm listening to a song from the 80s right i don't feel like i'm listening to the second incarnation of calling to you you know it's 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 new it's modern but it still feels like you. So when you're writing these new songs, are you drawing off your early influences of music you grew up with? Are you listening to new artists and new music that's influencing you? And I see you shaking your head. Yes. So talk about that. You know that Mike, that is brilliant. Your observation is brilliant. I commend you for that. 
Oh, thank you. Um, I have a lot of a lot of influences. I mean, from Janice Ian, Joni Mitchell, uh, Carol King, Steely Dan, uh, Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck is huge, mm -hmm. but I never stop learning or admiring new sounds. In the late uh, or early '90s, when I got signed to Simmons Records with Gene Simmons with my band. Um, we were on our way with the, the, that type of sound, but we got our ass kicked by the new, you know, the grunge material, which sure. Stone Temple Pilots, Alice in Chains, love Alice in Chains, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Soundgarden. And, and I loved all this new stuff because <clears throat> it was showing new, fresh energy, melodies, harmonies that I could hear. I mean, I'm like, oh my God, this is great stuff. Well, at the same time, it was choking my industry and what I was into. So yeah, it was, it was a, it was a double edged sword that I was constantly getting sliced with, but I, I never stopped learning because I listened to that stuff and I go, God, I love this stuff. And it re-inspired me to continue writing. And it may be for some fans when they listen to a cobalt parlor and even parts of opposite gods, they may hear a little bit more of the, the new stuff, you know, the, the, that I was influenced by. And, um, but I can't help it because I, the only way to create new and fresh stuff is to be re-influenced. Sure. And we are not in the seventies anymore. Where do you go? Zeppelin or Skinner, the rest of you go <laughs> fuck yourselves. You know, you got, it, you, you have to listen to a whole bunch of stuff. And I did, and I really did. And, and my tastes are very eclectic. And, you know, I love corn. I love corn. Mm -hmm. I like, uh, you know, Rob Zombie, you know, even though his melodies are pretty much kind of the same all the time. <laughs> but the energy is just, it's just, I love it. And, and the broad appeal that they have. It's the same thing that Kiss did. Their broad appeal, finally, when, uh, you know, Bill LaCoyne said, hey, write some anthems. And they went, mm -hmm. what's an anthem? And they start <laughs> writing them. And they're like, boom, you know. I mean, they had all the ingredients. So, yeah, I was re-inspired re, um, uh, by a lot of that material, uh, as I am inspired daily by new stuff. And there's a lot of bands and people that, that, that I listen to uh, when I do uh, uh, listen to my Pandora mixes. You know, Puddle of Mud, I love Puddle of Mud, uh, mm -hmm. Chevelle, and these, and these are old bands now. Well, that's what I was going to say. You're, you're rattling off these new bands. And look, I just went to see My Chemical Romance a month ago, and they were a new band that's been around for 20 years. So I get what you're saying right now, but um, it's funny how these newer bands for people like you and I have been around for a couple of decades yeah. already. <laughs> but it's good that you can, people can listen and hear that and enjoy that. Because if, if you get stuck in one myopic audio prison you i mean you can't you, you don't enjoy anything else i mean when we the wife and i watch movies and listen to movies you know i'm watching the track and you know i'm watching the scene and i've already figured out who's done what because like you know no fucking clue here <laughs> uh, but i'm listening to the musical scores because hmm. i'm into musical scores and orchestration and i'm going holy crap that's good we're recording this, right? Okay, good. <laughs> so I want to go back and listen to that the, the cellos and the violins and the and the the, 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 the timpani and the bass. Oh my God! It's because I like that. It's all magic and the melody and the music and how it. It's it's. I'm watching colors, is what it is. I'm watching colors go. You know, it's just like phenomenal. And that's how I do my music. Uh, and in these three CDs, you'll hear a lot of that. You know. And it may be a little deep for some people. Um, and I, I threw in some, some ear candy in there for people that, you know, want to hear the, yeah, I'm getting laid every night, which is <laughs> nowhere near true. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, you know, you say you threw in some ear candy and a song that jumped out at me when I first listened to the heavy canvas is the last one, Satan's Buddy, which I thought first off was hilarious, okay? So let me just say that. Anybody who hasn't heard the CDs yet, the biggest comparison I can give you is if you've ever heard Bon Jovi's New Jersey album, the last song, Love for Sale, is like this funky, fun thing. That's what it feels like, right? So anybody who knows that song, you got 
Sains Buddy, hilarious song. I know you say it's a joke, it's a joke, but it's talk joke. about that song because it's great. Well, you know, when I get down to the property, our, our commercial real estate, which my two studios are, my little one and my big one, I'm always running around there with the dogs, you know, and I've got Lexi now, our little uh, uh, American Eskimo, as opposed to Alfie, who passed away a couple of years ago, same day of that, Eddie Van Halen. Hmm. But, and I'm always singing little ditties just because I do that to entertain myself. And, and for some reason, the dogs, they, they love to hear it. They're like, you know, <laughs> and so I'll be walking to there and I'm, I'm always <clears throat> making fun of, you know, the perspectives of some people that feel they're doing good for the world, but they're not really. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my uh, daily song, you know, before I, I recorded it was, Satan is good, he's my buddy, he's my hero, yeah, Satan. Satan is good, he's my buddy, he's my hero, yeah, Satan. <laughs> Sometimes we hang out and do shit together. Sometimes we well, well, whatever, you know. Satan is good, he's my buddy, he's my buddy. And I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> I um, did too. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, there's a song here, and I can kind of do it like, my, you know, Ice Cream Man, without having to go into the big band mm, thing. Okay, yeah, sure, obvious, sure. obvious plagiarism. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I didn't want to do that, but it just was funny to me. I thought, you know, I can do the gang vocals. Where can I get a hell yeah, hell yeah? <laughs> and that's me doing everything. Right, yeah. Every all the backgrounds, <laughs> everything, and then at the end of the song, no more hell yeah. Can I get a hell yeah? Amen. <laughs> so it was kind of fun, you know, mm -hmm. and. And there's another one on there that I thought was kind of fun to do uh, called uh, the Billy Goat's Gruff. Yep. <laughs> which is, and I'm surprised how many people don't know the child's fable of Billy Goat's Gruff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would think everybody would know that, but I guess that's because I'm an old fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Uh... Well, so, you know, in the lyrics of some of the songs, especially Saints Buddy, you do have a few slight, I'll say, political references. And I oh, yeah. certainly don't want to get political at no. all here. No. But do you ever worry about alienating some of your fans with political no. point of views? Are you not they, really worried about that? They all know where I stand. <laughs> you know, it's I have respect for people that have different views. That's fine. Yeah. And on either side don't go far too far either side because that that's just a dangerous cliff yeah yep. um i think the indoctrination for a certain side is not good and that's where i will gravitate towards i mean i'm blue collar i mean i've always worked physically with my hands yep. i mean you can see up close the scars and the and and it, luckily i don't have any arthritis but yeah, and, and, and it's odd because my, my late mother, she, her hands were so messed up. And I used mm. to, I would just tear up when I visit her, you know, like, Mom, your hands hurt? No, they were they're killing me. My God, they looked. And then my, 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 my next sister, which is four years younger than I am, her hands are just completely destroyed. Mm. But I've got nothing. I've got, you know, my hands are in great shape. Could I get uh, an amen? Huh? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. You know, it's such a angelic uh, sound, um, but it's it's. Uh, I've been very fortunate, and and I'm very uh, grateful for that. Excellent. I know on the on some of the songs on the albums, the lyrics seem to be very personal, especially yeah. on the coastal CD. Um, talk a little bit about some of the lyrics of the songs and what some of them meant to you. Uh, there's. Two songs, well, there's actually one song on the Coastal CD that's about our late dog, Alfie. That's your little heart? Yeah, your little heart. And there's a tr traumatic thing of it. There is no master of that song. Hmm. The song that you're hearing on the CD is a rough mi headphone mix oh, wow. that I mastered and made on the machine just before it dumped a bunch of stuff. And I had to buy a new machine and salvage and start over. I lost a year's worth of work on that that machine. Wow. That's another, and, and th this will be in it's not my book, uh, my autobiography, but it, it'll be in a follow up to the to the recording of this this CD. Because oh my god, the amount of problems I went through doing this. But getting back to uh, your little heart, it's about Alfie, and. 
Here he is. Mm, oh, wow. Mm. He sleeps in bed with us every night mm. uh, for the last two years. And it's, it's a storyline about how he came into our lives as a rescue and the things he did. And it's all true. Of course, because, you know, when you write and sing right thing about things, you got to sing right about what you know. Otherwise, you know, they'll know, you know, it's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. But that was probably the hardest song I've ever had to sing. And it was never finished because when I did the orchestrations and this, the string parts and keyboards, the, it's hard, it's hard to describe this, but in towards the end of the song, there's a string embellishments that need to come down and be a different octave. And then I never got to do that because they were recorded as I was hearing it before I actually sang it. And I had to leave them because you know, I lost the whole track. It, it got chewed up by the studio. And luckily, thank God, I, I recorded that. And the same thing happened on the heavy album for a song called uh, Never Said, which is the second hardest song I ever sing about one of my best friends. And you start that one with a uh, answer machine message, yeah, that, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's his real voice. Uh, wow. And my best friend, Jimbo. Unbelievable. And it was um, tough. It was tough to sing. And, and, and I, but I fall through with it and, uh, I, I can't can't imagine doing songs live now, but um, and the, the the book the I'll, I'll do a, a small booklet about the recording because it'll it'll describe and explain you know the emotions that I'm feeling now about that and those are the 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 toughest songs I've ever sang in my life. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want I want to point out is there's a song on the the heavy record, on the heavy canvas. It's called. Um, uh, so into you, no, so into her. Okay. And it sound it's a love song, but very few people will be able to figure out who it or what it's about. Mm. And I'll let, I, I should let it sit out there and see if people figure it out. You know, I'm gonna go back and read over those lyrics now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because it when you first listen to it, oh yes, yeah, yeah, this that this that, man, no, it's it's not it's not about that at all. So you got to listen to it. But um, I'm very proud of what I put into it, the work I put into it, the thought, the production quality. Eh, I could have hired a better, you know, engineer, better <laughs> drummer, you know. Uh, but, you know, you get what you do when you have, you know, you make yourself available for the time to record and do everything. Well, I and think you're being a little hard on yourself, Todd, because when I listened to what you were saying before, mistakes and sound, and I, I don't hear any of that myself when I'm listening to it. So I think it's that perfectionist in you coming out a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty much the asshole in me, which I've been <laughs> called that a lot. All the guys that I play with in, in my, my local band from the 70s, Coco Blue, of which we did the show at Belly Up here just a couple months ago, mm -hmm. you know, they used to call me that. He's the asshole. I have fucking guy yeah and, and they go yeah but he'll probably be the first one to make it and i was <laughs> and you were and then uh, the second one was my cousin jason chef in the band of chicago you know, playing. oh wow. okay oh wow i didn't realize that yeah. so any of these songs were they originally written for four by fate and then you ended up not using them for that um actually i had written a couple songs for this the the heavy cd that ended up on four by fate okay uh like all the heavy heavy stuff on four by fate that was from my side was already written for this project uh -huh. but i i pushed it off to, to four by fate that's how far back we go 2017. wow is there anything new with four by fate or return of the comet no not yet uh, um richie i guess is still out in tour i'm not sure he's back home i haven't talked to him with corky lang um there's a lot of people want to hear another four by fate record which is very doable because everybody's on the east coast except for me a california boy <laughs> <laughs> um so and i talked to john and 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 pat and uh and, and rob afuso you know about the possibility of 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 doing that and i would not be opposed to doing that um especially if you know pat and i get together and you know pat's a prolific songwriter phenomenal songwriter 
and I would like us to get together and or, you know, write separately and, you know, get a cohesive thing. Because 4 by Fate record was, I had an idea for it, but we went through so many tragedies with that record, mm -hmm. with the loss of, of, of uh, AJ. AJ, and then before that, Stet Howland when he got in his car wreck, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, oh my God, it's just like the poor drummers in this band, you know, it's just bad. And yeah, you know, even Rob Afusa said, "I'm not sure I want to play with you." Fucker, you know? <laughs> you know? Oh, and that's the way it was. But uh, yeah, I, I would, I would like. It would be fun to do something, if nothing more, to you know, say, "Here we are again." You know, you know, years later. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. You know. Well, I hope you guys do because I'll, I'll say this: the song "Moonshine" to me was probably the best song I've heard in the last 15 years. So that was a yeah, and that's a Pat song, you know. <laughs> you that I'll kill a song. Like, yeah, it's a great song, you know, and and Pat, and he's got a lot of good songs. He's got the same influences. A re, well, he's younger than I am. Mm -hmm. Most everybody is. But, <laughs> and he was into Alice in Chains and Stone Temple Pilots and all that stuff. So he was he had a lot of that type of feel. And he's got some other songs that uh, that in, did end up on Four by Fate, but he had other ones that I wanted to do that are just smoking. So we may revisit those as well. But uh, yeah, he's he's a great songwriter, and and I'm not an asshole where like if it's not my song, I'm not doing it. No, <laughs> I want the best song, you know, or the great songs to be on the record. You know, if I write them, good. If I don't, well, you know, uh, you know, so be it. You know, let me sing a couple of them. But <laughs> you know, I, I want the good songs to be there for for people to enjoy. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Now, going back to your CDs and the Comet Canvas for a moment, right? You were saying before how you played all the instruments. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you to play those Anton drum parts? I know the songs are very different the way you record them, but, but yeah, here it is, you're doing Jamie's drum parts, you're doing Anton's drum parts. I'm like, and I never even knew you were a drummer. So I'm like, ah, what was the challenge like for you with those songs? Well, you know, I, I drum, when, back in the day, I drummed a lot when I was 15. And I don't want to have any recollection of being a good except for I got asked to be the drummer in a couple of bands. And when and I was thinking back then, no, I'm the singer, guitar player, man. I'm going to play your fucking drums, you know, that type of thing. Um, and then I ended up playing drums for, uh, for Cobalt Parlor and Opposite Gods uh, and a little bit of, of the winter CD. Um, playing drums, you know, it, boy, you have to have some, I mean, the, I've got a great meter. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can play to a click track like a mofo. But <laughs> to have tasty fills and that type of stuff, the only thing, of, you know, sometimes I would do too much of this, you know, because mm -hmm. that, that's a, the weak drummer's out. Well, I'm just going to go around the world and end up on the money. <laughs> you suck, you know, stop doing that. <laughs> and you can hear that here and there. But to do the drums on Breakout, you know, when I decided to redo the song, I, the song, I thought, well, how am I going to do this? Like, well, I'll, I'll practice. And it, with elect, and they're electronic drums. They're not real drums, okay. but it was far more efficient for me to do electronic drums because mm -hmm. you can come back the next day and fix stuff, and I had to fix a lot of shit. <laughs> so, you know, thank God for the you know, automatic punch in, punch outs. Mm -hmm. And that that's what saved my ass on, on that song, uh, <laughs> particularly, but you know, the, 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 the idea is that I could do it, and I did do it, nowhere near as cool as Anton. I'm never going to say, you know, oh, I can beat Anton. You know, I used to <laughs> bug Rob Afuso about drumming. But, you know, when he's at his peak, he's still kick ass. Uh, it was, I, I approached it in the fact of I can play drums, not great, but enough to get the point across, enjoy, move on. Forget about that drummer over there. Here's the next song. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so it, it was fun. But yeah, I had to do uh, some punch-ins because I'd come back and listen to it the next day and go, oh my God, that's horrible. You need to redo it, you know? Well, I'll say this, you know, when you did break out on, on the CD, it's definitely different than the classic version that everybody knows. It's, oh, yeah. it's got this funky sound. And to the point that I'm like, I right, you're going to just drop that drum part. Nobody's even going to notice or care because it's got a whole different feel. And then the drum part comes in and I'm like, all right, I give you credit. You, you, and, and you kind of, I'll say you did it well, but um, had you ignored that and just left it out of song, the song was so different that I don't even know if it would have been missed. 
Yeah, it, it and the and you're exactly right on that because if you take the challenge to do the songs and you do all the instruments and you do a solo, you better fucking come up with something <laughs> representation of well, this is the best I could do, you know, fuck you if you don't like it. But it it and and I thought when I started recording it, I go, all right, what am I going to do here? So I started messing with the drum parts to go. I can do this. Mm -hmm. I can do some, you know, splicing here and there, but I can do it enough to make it fun for the listener. Mm -hmm. They know I'm never going to do this live, you know, uh, you know, I mean, and there's a lot of drumming that I can do live, but I don't have to. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, earlier you mentioned the uh, pre-party Kiss Cruise pre-party show that you did, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. Anton was at that. I know John Regan was supposed to be at that also, yeah. and he ended up having to back out for health issues, I believe I heard. So how's, do you know how he's doing? Well, he's doing fine. Okay, he had, he's had an increasing thing, and I, I, I won't get into too much of his personal of uh, uh, health reasons, but he had some issues that were I, I, happening back in, in 2019 where he's going, you know, I got to sit down because standing up sometimes is just like a little dizzy. And it has to do with, you know, uh, blood pressure, hmm. nothing really traumatic, but he's got to be careful of travel. And his doctor said, well, you're not going to go anywhere. Uh, and so when he told me, he said, look, I, I can't do the L.A. show with you guys. And I called or I called the promoter said, and, and of course, Joe D'Angelo, he already knew about it. And he, mm -hmm. he said, uh, ah, that, that's horrible. I said, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea for us to do this show at all. And then uh, Joe told me, he said, look, there's a lot of people that have already bought a lot of VIP and a lot of people showing up. I would hate to have to cancel this because, you know, people are depending on, you know, some part of the comet. Sure. And I said, you know what, you're, you're right. And, and uh, I mean, I hate to do it without Johnny, but, you know, Anton Fig was going to be there. Me, of course, that's half mm -hmm. common. Uh, and then we messed around with a couple of ideas of, of who could do the guitar parts. And I played with Keith Robert War in Vegas and the kid, I call him a kid, <laughs> he's so good and he's so, and he's on point and he does his homework and he just does a screw up and he does ace a pretty damn good ace too. I thought this is a kid's got to do it. So I told Joe, this is a guy who wants to use guitars. And then we were looking for a bass player and I had a couple other idea uh, ideas, but Joe said, look, I got a guy that plays with, he played with Y and T and, and currently plays the bullet boys and he's phenomenal. You know, you should give him a, a you know, consideration. So I looked him up and I went, yes, <laughs> thank you. And, He's so funny because he's such a great guy. I and mean, we, we, we blended like that without even knowing each other on the phone. And then we met blended like that. And I swear to God, when, when I first saw him at the rehearsal, when he showed up at the hotel and then in rehearsal, I'm looking at him going, the fucking guy, he's just like Rob Afuso, but he plays bass, you know, hmm. my wife showed up for rehearsals uh, the night before the show. She goes, she goes to me, he goes, Oh my God, he reminds me of Robert Fu. So I said, that's my fucking <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. It was, it was a great mix and he's a great guy. And, you know, again, another uh, a lifelong uh, uh, music uh, friend. And, uh, um, you know, we, we talked about doing whatever we can in the future, whatever you know comes up for us. Right. And you know what? Obviously, John was missed at the show. The fans loved John. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the feedback that I heard from all the people who were there was that it was still a great time. Uh, you put on a great show and you get, you know, you're not, uh, it wasn't the first time you were playing the pre-party. I know you did one, one year and Ace joined you guys on stage. One year Vinnie Vincent joined you guys on stage. So oh, yeah. you, know, you guys have a little bit of a history with the Kiss Cruise pre-party. Yeah, it's, it's fun. You know, there, there's, there's a backstory to why we've never done the, never done the Kiss Cruise. I'll just let that sit. Uh, mm -hmm. But, it, now it, you it, piqued my curiosity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Conspiracy theories. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's um, it, it's always fun. I don't give a fuck as long as I'm playing for the fans that 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 brought us the Friendly's Comet um, to where we still are, where they're still writing and still buying, still wanting CDs. You know, I I will play I will play acoustically. Matter of fact, I'm doing that acoustically in Rockford, Illinois, 
early next year. I forgot about that. If you're star rehearsing, <laughs> <laughs> but I will do that for, as long as I can. You know, this year is ringing like crazy. Hmm. This year is pretty much uh, Ted Nugent. Uh, and this this one's Rick Nielsen, <laughs> and both of them are me, and you know, Fairly's comment. It's just like, so when it gets to the point where I can't do it anymore, they'll go, you know, I'm done. I'm just gonna ride my Harleys and play my motorhome and and my dogs, you know, and and uh, you know, I guess my wife, you know, whatever. You know. <laughs> well, and you know, we've joked a little bit during this conversation about getting old, and we all are, right? As I always say, it's better than the alternative. Either you get old or you die young, right? So I'd rather get old. But you know, we've got to take care of ourselves. And you know, you were saying how John couldn't perform, and you know, I don't know if you saw it, but this past weekend, the drummer from Kicks, Jimmy Chalfont, um, had a heart attack on stage during the I middle of this show. I did see that. I'm reading about it. I'm not happy about it. It's it's it's, uh, it's unsettling. I think for drummers, they have a mentality and a body structure that's usually pretty go 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 go. go, go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could have been a drummer because I was always in trouble in school. You know, I was at the table going, <laughs> Todd, what? <laughs> Knock it off! What am I doing? You know, I didn't realize it. So. Getting back to that, yeah, it's it's sad when you see uh, some some of the musicians of our time and past and and and, and present are are fading or going away. It's it, it's very unsettling. Yeah. Um, and we are reaching the age, you know, uh, where that's going to happen more often than not, exactly. and it's upsetting. So you have to really cherish the the. The, the musicians, the artists that made indelible uh, impressions on you, uh, on all of us, you know, when when Lane uh, from Allison Chains, you know, passed away. I mean, there's there's reason why and all that kind of, mm -hmm. but it's upsetting because I thought he had a lot to offer musically and, and, and mm -hmm. that type of thing. And Phil Lennart from, you know, uh, I mean, and we're going back, you know, from, from uh, Thin Lizzy. It's just upsetting. And so I, I think about you know, sometimes I think, well, am I going to be missed if something happens to me? You know, you know. I mean, I take a lot of chances. I used to race motocross and you know, amateur wise, and and I you know ride Harleys and Sturgis and and you know do a lot of crazy stuff out in the sand dunes and on my off road stuff. So <laughs> you never know when something could happen. But no. I'm probably going to be around just long enough to agitate the fuck out of everybody who doesn't like me. So, well, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you mentioned doing an acoustic show. Have you ever thought of maybe doing like an acoustic run of shows across some big cities in America? Yes, uh, I have. And I've mentioned that to Robin Zander from Cheap Trick. Hmm. I said, you know, when things slow down for you, whenever that may be, <laughs> I would love for us to get together and do this because, you know, I can imitate him. You know, I mean, nobody nobody can do Robin Zander like Robin Zander. Of course, yeah. but I can imitate him very closely. I guess his 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 uh, youngest son is doing a very good job, but uh, that was a thought, uh, and I haven't talked to him in a while. But I also talked to Pat Gasparini about doing some some acoustical stuff because we both like again Allison Chains, and we can incorporate some of the new stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought about that. Uh, uh, Eric Martin is doing that with his tour. We just went to see him recently, and what a, he's still a phenomenal singer. My guy, he's great. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, and yeah, I would love to do that. But you know, the truth is, how many butts can you put in the seats? Right. And, and 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 that's ticket sales. And 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 we're all the old enough to understand now that if you can't sell enough tickets, nobody's going to give a fuck. Sure. And so, and, and I've learned that over and over with all the bands that I've been in. 707, bam. Ted Nugent, bam. Cheap Trick, bam. Francis Comet, bam. I've been hammered so many times at the bottom that I'm very, very familiar with the moles that reside down there in the bottom. <laughs> so I, I'm not going to fool myself into thinking, yeah, I can go out and do an acoustic tour. No, you can't. Hmm. But if I can get some some action happening and some 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 uh some publicity going yeah i would do it um as long as i take care of my family businesses here of course. that's the only thing uh, i'm worried about is there's a hell of a lot of responsibility on me now uh and my parents are still alive my my stepmom my, my dad's still alive at 86 and 90 uh, but they depend awesome. on my every move 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I consult with them. I mean, I, I had to deal with some issues today. And if they're gone, then I've got to deal with it 100% of the time. And mm-hmm. I can't just leave them. Sure. You know, and do that. So, and, and that's a re- the, the, the reality of, you know, take care of your elderly parents, you know. I mean, I, they're probably going to last longer than, than, than I might at this point. <laughs> but them and Keith Richards, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that guy's never going to die, you know. <laughs> Amazing. That guy's amazing, amazing luck for all things he's done. But yeah, I mean, that would be a lot of fun to be able to do a, a, you know, an acoustic tour. Well, maybe if you can't do a full tour, maybe even just some Kiss Expos where you, you always know you have a built-in fan base at those things that are, that yeah. are always dying to hear your music. It's fun. I, and I enjoy them because they're the most loyal fans I've ever encountered. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of fans over the world uh, from all my bands. And, you know, when I joined uh, Ace with, with, with Freddie's Comet, I was amazed at the diehard uh, dedication. Um, and I, I don't want to say amused at first, but I was like intrigued, like, wow, really? And then as I got older, I go, holy crap, really? Mm-hmm. And then as I got even older, I went, thank God, really? <laughs> I mean, they don't, they're like, they're, they're pit bull piranhas. They don't give up. And that's, that's a great thing because I, I, I have a lot of fans, in, in, but you know, they've, they've come in and out through my life because life happens um, and, and their families happen. But the, the kiss fans and the comet fans, and the, they just, they never let go. Mm-hmm. And if I can bring some of them into what I do now in the adult contemporary, and and there are a lot there that realize, oh my God, he can do other stuff. Right. I'm a songwriter. I'm not a virtuoso. I can play my ass off in a lot of things, but I never claim to be a lead player or you know a great piano player. I, I'm just not. I'm a songwriter, mm-hmm. and I'm a melody man. I do orchestrations, and like I said, put me in a room with all the instruments, I'll come out with some shit. I mm-hmm. dare anybody else to do that. And I think to me, the timing with these CDs is perfect because as we get older, Kiss fans or just music fans in general have a much yes. bigger open mind now than they did in the 70s and the 80s. When I grew up in the 80s, I listened to all types of stuff. I, I listened to Kiss. I listened to Metallica. I, I jokingly say I was the only kid I knew and as a teenager that listened to Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden, then listened to Like a Virgin by Madonna, right? Because I just thought <laughs> good music is good music. And now as we get older, people are opening their minds. And I think they'll embrace some of the yeah. different types of styles of music you have on these records. Kids. Yeah, because they, they they're still in the rock mode, but every once in a while, it's like, okay, I got to take care of the grandson. <laughs> so we're not going to go full rock. Well, maybe I'll go to Madonna. I mean, Madonna uh, uh, at close range. Remember that song, mm-hmm. the movie? Yep. What a track! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Phil Collins, Against All Odds. Absolutely. One of my favorite to- songs ever. Yep. I mean, the orchestrations and the melodies, like the emotion. And she's like, boom, you know, of course, Rachel Ward, you know, she was <laughs> a look at. But yeah, you have to, you have to open up a little bit. Otherwise, you're stuck in a grid that just like, I and, and, and I, I personally am nowhere like that. I mean, back then I was listening to Zeppelin. As I said earlier, mm-hmm. Humble Pie, Joni Mitchell, Carol King, mm-hmm. you know, because they're songs, you know. A good song is a good song, and you've got three yeah. CDs full of them right now. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you saying that. For the people who are listening and watching, if they don't know, where can they find the CDs, Todd? Right now, all the three CDs are on ToddHoward.biz. It's a Shopify site. I'm also going to put on them on ToddHoward.com, which I've yet to rebuild but uh, <laughs> i've got more stuff coming up on the toddhoward.biz i today just today i received the uh, the white with red lettering and my signature canvas three series picks guitar picks on oh, there. nice i'm gonna have pictures put up i've got four by fate uh, uh t-shirts for uh, return of the comet t-shirts and mm-hmm. some limited the last amount of four by fate uh cds that we had i'll be putting that up after thanksgiving because i made the mistake of showing some other cds and oh my god the orders that came through <laughs> keep up with them so i'm just gonna have to put them on the site but uh you can check that out you can check me out on 
Facebook, Facebook is, uh, there's two Todd Howarth ones, uh, strictly music that I don't keep up with a whole bunch, but the other one is me that re- and it has uh, the, the, the new CDs in the background. And that, that reach, that spans everything I do. So you take everything I do with a grain of salt, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's from family life to regular life to, to views on everything. And then my musical stuff. Um, and you can also see me on Instagram uh, under my name as well. Uh, and more things will be popping up, popping up as we get through the holiday seasons, probably into the new year. I am working on my autobiography. That's it's, what I was going to ask you about next. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's done. I'm just doing the the editing myself. I've got to add some stuff because I keep remembering stuff. You know, I'll be sitting like somewhere and I'll go, oh. And I got to write down my phone, you know, uh, I'm not going to get everything on there, but there's, there's great chapters. It goes to all my musical uh, endeavors and influences. And uh, from here in San Diego, all the way to San Francisco and then back here. And then when I branched out into Chicago, Detroit, New York, um, and I'm also going to do an audio book of that. Hmm. And I will say this, there are some sexy parties that will be in the book but and i'm not gonna do the audio part because i can't read that stuff without <laughs> okay. yeah i took my giant oh no it's just too far <laughs> no, it, it, I, I can't get but in the book i'm gonna have sections or, or in the very back of of these events that took place that were just <laughs> phenomenal mm. now I'm, i will take creative liberties not about you know portions or sizes but i will talk about <laughs> I mean, just just things that many people dream about happening, and and it never happens for them. It did for me. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something we can expect in twenty twenty three? Oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely gonna be done. Uh, probably probably the first trimester of uh, twenty three. That is awesome. Anything else, Todd? You want the fans to know about the CDs or anything else that you're working on that you want them to know about? If there's any questions, you know, I forgot to put my email address on the CDs. I, I mean, I, I was rushing. I was sitting right here mm-hmm. on this laptop, getting all the lyrics in and all the stuff, the credits. And I, you know, when the wife came home on the weekends because she works at, you know, up north in Brea, uh, in, in LA County, and I'm like, what am I missing here? She goes, oh, this, that, that. Ah, shut up, I don't have that. <laughs> and so, uh, but I want to tell the fans that they can get in touch with me through. You know, um, messaging on Facebook or emails, which is Todd Boy, T O D B O Y, at cox.net. You can ask me questions. If I don't answer, you know, uh, re ask me, please, because I, I, my, the emails are amazing. Sure. I get so many of them. But um, I just want to say uh, if you get a chance to get the CDs, there is going to be a Christmas sale coming up after Ooh. Thanksgiving. But I want people to enjoy them, um, and I cannot tell everybody how thankful I am that at this point in time for me uh, that I can do this stuff, put in the work. I, I don't expect to make money. It's not about the money. It's about recouping my production costs, which I've already done, and then getting the music out there to people who want to hear. And I can't tell you how thankful I am for the people that are, that are picking up the CDs, uh, you know, one, two, three, whatever, and then past catalog um, and listening to them because it's it's a part of my life. I mean, most every song on all three CD, C, three CDs have a, 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 a part of me that that I can't reproduce mm-hmm. except for within song. So thank you very much for being there. Absolutely. And you know, Todd, I'll, I'll close on this. You know, to me, you put your money where your mouth is. And and going back to, we were talking before about the Indie 2018 Kiss Expo. And there was a ton of guests there that year, if you remember, tons. Yeah. And everybody was set up at tables, signing stuff for the fans. And of course, uh, as the artists always do, charging for, for autographs, uh-huh. except for you guys. Uh-huh. Not a penny. For you guys, I remember so vividly, it was about meeting the fans, talking with the fans. I saw you in the lobby, you took pictures, you were taking pictures with anybody who wanted. Yeah. To me, you put your money where your mouth is. It was about that fan experience and, and no disrespect to anybody else who was there. And I love all oh. the artists who were there, but yep. you guys were the only ones, not a penny did you take from the fans. 
and and I I will never charge for the the, the uh, photographs or, or signatures, and I have uh, full disclosure. I've had some people in the industry that said, "Can you sign a bunch of stuff?" Mm-hmm. Or I said, "Well, yeah, but my God, that's a lot of stuff." And they said, well, we're going to pay you. I said, "Okay, well, how much do you want to pay me?" And right. they quoted me a price, and I said, "That's too much. Hmm. Take five bucks off it, and I'll I'll, I'll do it." And and that just happened at, at Kiss Cruise uh, mm-hmm. thing that I did. So, but that's an industry for them and that's their business you know yep. uh and I'll, I'll i'll do that but for fans that want something signed i'll never stop signing i'll yep. always sign you know and, and to that point i mean here i'll hold up one of the cds you can see anybody watching there it is todd you said i didn't ask you to sign it you know you didn't charge anything extra for it you just and i and i noticed i saw on your facebook page you were doing this for i'm going to say everybody or certainly for many of them if not everybody and that just again speaks to you as a person and, and what you're trying to do for the fans so thank you and i appreciate you bringing that up because that's a very important point i mean it's a far better perspective than being an old stripper and saying, I can strip this, come on. Oh, man, here we go. <laughs> but no, I, I, it, 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 I, I will always do that because I am so very thankful for every one or every hundred fans that come up to me and speak to me. I said, you know, you are really pretty much the reason why I continue to do this. Mm, that's amazing. Well, for the fans out there, go pick them up. It's Coastal Canvas. It's Heavy Canvas. It's Comet Canvas. You can't go wrong with all three. The, the covers kind of connect a little bit with each other as well. So you can make my a little- son, uh... My son designed them. I came up with the concept. Yeah. He, he, he did all the illustrations and we put that together so rapidly quick. And it's I'm going to have an eight by 10 of all the CDs together for nice. that too. But um, um, thank you. Yeah, it's-, it's um, I think that uh, most of the people that know me or, or, or know of the, the comet stuff, they will enjoy it to uh, varying degrees, hopefully greater varying degrees. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, like you said before, they can pick it up, toddhoward.biz, right? Yep. yep. And yep. hopefully we'll see you, whether it's a Kiss Expo or show somewhere in America, hopefully we'll see some shows coming up in the near future. And certainly we'll look for the book in 2023. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. And when the book comes out, please get a hold of me because i will blab all about the book too i absolutely look forward to having you on for the third time it'll be the charm but this was a lot of fun it was a blast todd i want to wish you a happy thanksgiving have a great holiday season as well and to you as well thank you and to the fans happy gobble day uh, thanksgiving is very important regardless of what people say it's very important <laughs> and uh, merry christmas as well absolutely well todd thanks again we'll see you soon and thanks for everything All right, Mike, thank you. Take it easy. All righty, there you have it. I'd like to thank Todd for joining me, talking all about his Canvas CD set. I think you guys are going to really enjoy them. Check them out. As you heard, toddhoworth.biz if you want to place your order. Once again, that's toddhoworth.biz. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.